This week we're talking about how things get in and out of the cell and what cells are made of. These are the questions you looked at yesterday as you read. And here, in case you want it for review, um, this is Chapter 3, Sections 1 and 2. But what you've been doing today is looking at these worksheets. So let's take a quick look at the worksheets and go over the answers as a way of studying what you need to know. So you guys can help me out. Let it, let's do this. This is over the first section, of course, the chemical compounds that make up cells. So should be pretty easy, a nice little review. Carbohydrates, what is an example of a carbohydrate? Sugar. Sugars are carbohydrates. Um, other carbohydrates? Yes. Starches. One more carbohydrate. Yes. Cellulose. And so that's going to be like grains. We have complex carbohydrates like grains and oatmeal and whole wheat and things like that that take a long time to digest. We have simple carbohydrates like sugars that we can digest very quickly. And these help form cell walls um, and, of course, plants, uh, cell membranes, and provide energy. Fats. Um, fats are also known as, what's our more scientific name for fats? Yes, lipids. Usually on a quiz and test, I will use the word fats uh, rather than lipids. Um, and they help form cell membranes. And uh-oh, what else are we going to put here? What are, what are fats good for? Yes, they store energy, right? Which is why... Um, that's why they taste so good, all that yummy, greasy, fatty stuff. But it stores energy. That's why it's bad to eat too much fatty food because it's a lot of stored energy. Butter, oil, all those yummy things. But they have a lot of energy in them. Okay, next. Uh, and they, let's see, a type of compound, enzyme. Which gonna, what's going to go here? This one's a little tricky. Yes. Proteins, enzymes help form cell membranes, organelles, speed up chemical reactions. Everybody agree? And the last one, DNA directing all the cells' functions. Come on, let's get some more people answering. Yes. Is it? Yes, nucleic acids. And we're going to talk in a couple weeks a, a lot about DNA. So we don't need a huge, um, you don't need to remember a lot of this. Directs all the cells functions. And what else did you put in here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cell, you, yeah, I spelled, I thought that didn't work. Cellulose. Cellulose, right? Cellulose. Stuff that makes up cell walls. Very good. Okay, and what's the last thing here for this one? Directs the cells function and what else did you have? Good. So this is the genetic information. And so this is, of course, going to be genes and uh, chromosomes and that. Okay. Pretty straightforward. And then the next one was, again, matching up these things. And this is kind of the less important stuff, not going to be a huge issue on the quiz, just knowing the main ones, proteins, uh, fats, carbohydrates. But let's go ahead and do our list here. So here are the correct answers here. And again, in terms of what you need to know, we do not really talk a lot about RNA this year. Um, it works, it produces proteins, it acts as a pattern, it acts as a messenger. But again, in a couple of weeks, we're going to talk a lot about DNA. Um, and RNA is very similar, but we don't spend a lot of time on that. Um, again, most important ones to know, proteins, um, lipids, carbohydrates those major um, building blocks. Okay, and next, the really important 
material for this week, the cell in its environment. At the beginning of class, we talked a little bit about diffusion. Diffusion is where any substance, any substance at all, goes from an area of greater concentration to lesser concentration, like our food coloring in a large jar of water. So you see now that is quite evenly spaced, like the vinegar in the beaker that I moved back there because sitting here close to it, it was too stinky for me. So that's diffusion, molecules moving from an area of greater concentration to lesser concentration. And this ends up being very useful for cells. So let's take a look at these three um, pictures and decide what is happening in each one. Water moves out of the cells of a saltwater fish and into the ocean. So is this diffusion, osmosis, active or passive transport? What's going on here? Osmosis. Why is this osmosis? Does everybody agree? There's two keys to making it osmosis. That it's water and it's moving through a cell membrane. Osmosis is the diffusion of water, and you can just remember in and out of a cell. It's actually technically through a semi-permeable membrane, but uh, diffusion of water in and out of a cell, but anytime it's going through a membrane, a semi-permeable membrane, a membrane that only lets some things in and out. Okay. Oxygen, we talked about this at the beginning of class, moving from the lungs into the bloodstream. So you breathe in, lots of oxygen here, not very much here, the oxygen's going to move. Diffusion, osmosis, active or passive transport, what is it? Diffusion, because even though it's going through cells, it's not water, and it's going from greater concentration to lesser concentration, right? Um, any molecule going from uh, greater to lesser concentration. And then, this one's tricky, what in the world is happening here? Sodium is being pumped out of a nerve cell, and this is showing you that there's not very much sodium in here, and there's a lot of sodium out here, but the sodium is still moving out. So this must be what? Yes active transport. And active transport is something that's really important for cells because sometimes you need to move um, molecules against the way they would naturally move. Okay, so let's look at a couple quick things here on this next section. So osmosis versus diffusion and again, this is an important question we talk about this week. Uh, we just talked about it on the other sheet of paper, right? And on Thursday, when we do our diffusion demo activity, we will do an example of things moving from one place to another, and you have to decide if it's diffusion or osmosis. But who can tell me quickly the difference between osmosis and diffusion? Osmosis is... Okay, a diffusion of water across a membrane, we'll just say cell membrane, diffusion could be anything, diffusion could be the food coloring, the vinegar, anything else. Okay, then... any molecules. Okay, active and passive transport. Big difference between active and passive transport. Difference between active and passive transport. Active means it requires, and yeah, actions, the cell's energy, work. Right? When you're active, you're using energy. So active 
uses the cell's energy. And it's very important, but it, it takes energy from the cell. Passive, it just happens through diffusion or osmosis, and the cell does not need to use ener any energy at all. And so that's very nice and easy. And this is the way lots of things get transported in and out of cells. Okay? Two methods of active transport. I've got a picture I'll skip to. And then reasons that cells are small. So I am going to skip... Um, I'm going to skip over this for a minute because I think I have some cool pictures here. Maybe. Mm, I don't. Okay, I thought I had the picture from the... Um, I thought I had the picture from the textbook of the active transport. So what are the two types of active transport? Two methods of active transport? Do you guys remember? There's two main things that are happening. Yes. Yeah. You remember that... Um, you remember that when we look at uh, the cell membrane, really large molecules, here's the cell membrane, really large molecules can't fit through, and so there's these special doorways called transport proteins. And really large molecules have to go through there, and they fit in and then they go through. So that's one method for really large um, molecules. And then the other one we talked about a few minutes ago the other type of active transport would be when you need to move something against the gradient. So from an area of lesser concentration to an area of greater concentration. Oops, kind of ran into that. Okay, so again, on Thursday, we're going to do another activity that's going to help you practice this same material. I did not go over these correct answers. Um, we didn't go over these together. I will put them in here. And then this will be a good review for the quiz, especially, especially the active passive transport stuff, more so than the cell chemicals. OK? And these are the last answers. Remember that, as the direction says, if it's false, you write the correct word to make it to make the sentence true. So those are the correct answers. It's a good thing to look over for the quiz that we will have on Friday. All of this inf information will also be practiced on our Thursday activities.